Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting video. I have received a package from Action VFX in the mail. I'm actually really pumped to open this up and check out what's inside. If for some reason you still haven't heard of Action VFX, they create super high quality stock footage element, anything for explosions, destruction, debris, smoke, water, sparks, embers, anything like that. And the elements are being used in popular TV shows such as Narcos, NCIS, The Walking Dead, a whole bunch of others. You can purchase individual elements ranging anywhere from 10 to $50 depending on the element and the quality level that you're going for, or you can download entire collections. If you are thinking of purchasing any of the elements, do make sure to use coupon code Surface Studio and you'll get 10% off the final purchase price. But if you haven't yet, go check them out. There's amazing stuff on their website, a whole bunch of free elements that you can just download and use. Really like these guys. Obviously, I've worked with them in the past and they've sent me this package for free to check out and review. So. Let's open this puppy up. Cool, that's everything that's in the box. First off, thank you very much Gabe for packing me this lovely package. And also thank you to all the guys at Action VFX obviously for sending this to me in the first place. In the package I got an Action VFX mouse pad an Action VFX t-shirt and now I think this is going to be a little bit too big for me. I feel I can almost fit into this twice, but that's all right. I do appear a bit bigger on video than I am in real life. Appreciate it anyways. Then in the box for the drive, I got a bunch of stickers, business cards and an armband. And the main attraction, this is the Action VFX drive. It contains all 38 complete collections that are sold by Action VFX. It's, I think over 1,500 different elements. It boggles my mind that this little Western Digital Elements drive contains more data than I could probably download in a month of using my internet, even if I tried. But now, just so you get a little bit more out of this video, let's check out what's on here and let me give you a few tips for how to use some of these elements. Let's have a look at what you will find on the actual Action VFX drive. All up, you're getting 2.5 terabytes of action stock footage. If we jump into the explosion section here, you will see that most of these elements come in different formats. For these files here, we have both ProRes and R3D, which is the format used by RED cameras. Within these folders, I also have different resolutions available, in this case 3 and 5K, but let's go check out the 5K version. Do note that Windows Explorer or macOS Finder may simply not be able to display these files properly and in my case VLC player can't even render them out properly simply due to the video codec used. But they will all work perfectly within Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut, NuGo, any other video editing or visual effects compositing tool that you may be using. Also note that Action VFX actually does offer a mix of recorded real life action stock footage as well as some rendered elements for like their aerial explosions as well as some of these exploding debris elements here. These rendered elements here are available both in ProRes and if you do want some more control on how to composite these into your shot, they also come as image sequences using the OpenEXR format. Note that all of these elements separate out their beauty paths and their shadow paths to give you more control when you're compositing these elements into your final shot, but we'll get to that in a minute. As I said, the drive contains all of the collections sold by Action VFX and I'm really excited to have this massive asset library at my disposal. But now, let's quickly run through how you can composite one of these explosions into your shot within Adobe After Effects. Here we are in Adobe After Effects. I've just got a short clip here of water running like crazy. So let's take one of the Action VFX explosions and composite it right into the center of this shot. I've imported a bunch of elements from the Action VFX collections and I'm going to grab one of the explosions and just drag it into my composition, place it right on top. If you wonder why you're not seeing anything, that's because the explosion is actually way too big for the footage I'm compositing it into. So let's just scale this down, position it and time it so it goes off right as water runs past. Then let's apply a mask to this layer to cut off the bottom edge of the explosion so it fits in a little bit nicer. And now, because the explosions from Action VFX are really well exposed, the darks are actually a little bit too dark to match my footage. So let's brighten up the shadows of this explosion. You can use whatever effect you want. Personally, I prefer just applying a levels effect. And then let's simply bring up the blacks to kind of blend the explosion a little bit nicer into the shot. And that looks a whole lot more natural already. 
Next, I like adding a little bit of light wrap, which is light coming around the outside of the explosion, so kind of ambient light from the shot reflecting onto this explosion. For that, there's multiple ways you can do this. I prefer just applying a glow effect. In the glow effect settings, change glow based on to alpha, so you're kind of glowing the outer edge of this explosion element. And just bring up the radius a little bit. It's going to bring down the intensity as well. I just want a little bit of brightness on the outer edge of this explosion. Again, it's quite subtle, but it just, it just blends this element into the shot a little bit more realistically. Next, you can see that the explosion right now sits on top of Walter. And I've prepared two little compositions here. I've did a little bit of a rotoscoping job on Walter. So I'm just going to drop my Walter roto layer into this composition to kind of keep Walter right on top of this explosion. It looks obviously like the explosion is actually behind him, which is what we want. And then a little bit further towards the back, you can see the explosion kind of overlapping these trees here in the foreground. And again, that doesn't quite look the way it should. So I've got another composition prepared, which is called Tree Overlay Comp. I'm just going to drag that into my composition. And this is going to make this smoke plume of this explosion vanish behind those trees. And this looks a whole lot more natural that way. I might actually come back to the explosion into the effects and just lower the brightness of this level's effect. I think I've blown the shadows out just a little bit too much. I just want to brighten them so they match in with the overall brightness of this shot. So let's rewind and play this back. And that looks really cool already. Now let's add some glow to the shot. And for that, I like to just duplicate the explosion itself, drag this to the very top. Let's rename this layer to glow as well. Now for this layer, I don't usually need any effects, so I can just delete them all and then simply apply a fast blur or a fast box blur if you're running the latest version of Adobe After Effects. Then let's blur this layer out quite considerably. So we're just going to this orange glow and let's change the layer blend mode from normal over to add, just to add a bit more of that brightness. And if I solo this layer, you can see this, this is actually quite faint. If you want to make the glow stronger, what I personally like to do, I like to apply a curves effect, then in the curves settings, come over to the alpha channel, just push this up to kind of intensify this glow a little bit more. And you can also just blur it out a bit more so it kind of reaches over almost the entire shot. And let's unsolo this layer. So kind of just adding this really nice intensity right there in the middle. And what you might find is you may find that this glow actually makes the center of the explosion a little bit too intense. I like the glow on the outside, but I don't want the glow to be over the explosion itself. So for that, we can simply use a track mat. And in order to do that, let's simply duplicate the gas explosion, drag it above our glow. And then on our glow, let's change the track mat from none over to alpha inverted. And now you can adjust the opacity of this track mat to determine how much of that glow actually drops onto the explosion itself. And I don't want it to be fully blown out. I want it to be a little bit more subtle. So maybe I'll set this to about 70%. So we're getting a little bit of that glow. And maybe what I might do on the glow, I might bring down the blur radius a little bit as well, just to keep the glow and the intensity a little bit closer to where the explosion is happening. Again, let's rewind and play this back. And that is looking really nice. Now, the bottom end of the explosion doesn't look too exciting right now. So I've also imported a bunch of other elements from ActionVFX. I've imported these dust waves, which you can actually get for free from actionvfx.com. So let's just drag one into the composition. Let's actually scale this down as well. And let's change the blend mode over to screen. Kind of position this right at the bottom of this explosion here. Let's scale it up just a little bit more. And obviously I want to time this dust wave so it kind of kicks in at the moment the explosion starts. Maybe will make this just a little bit bigger. And again, let's grab the pen tool and cut out this bottom edge of the dust wave. So we just have a little bit of smoke being emitted where the explosion strikes. I'm also going to import some debris elements and those ones are part of the rendered elements that you can get on the ActionVFX drive or generally from ActionVFX. I've got a concrete debris element here. Let's just drop that in our composition. And again, let's just scale this down because again, this is likely going to be way too big. Let's time this up again to kick in with the explosion. And again, because these elements are a little bit too bright, let's also apply a levels effect. And again, let's just bring up the shadow so it kind of just blends in a little bit better with the overall brightness of this shot. Now, the one thing that still makes them stand out is they don't yet have a shadow, but all of the rendered elements from ActionVFX also include a shadow pass, which is the same elements rendered out, but you can only see the shadows. So let's drop that into our composition right underneath our debris. 
Let's grab the position and the scale from the debris layer and copy and paste that over onto the shadow layer. And then you can see all of the shadows coming in. Let's just adjust the opacity because I don't want it to be quite that strong, maybe to about 50% or so. So they're just casting a little bit of shadow. And let's make sure that the shadow layer and the debris actually line up in terms of that timing. Let's rewind a little bit and play this back again. Cool, and that's looking really nice. Now, I may wanna grab the glow itself and make sure that sits at the very top. And I kind of also want the water rotor to be in front of the debris itself. That way I think everything just kind of blends together a little bit nicer. And finally, what I always advocate, it's let's add an adjustment layer, grab this to the very top. Let's rename this one to color grading. And let's apply a curves effect to it. Let's push a whole bunch more contrast into our image and also just to give it a bit more style. Let's come into the blue channel and I want to pull a bit of blue out of the highlights and push a bit more blue into the shadows and maybe come into the red. I'm going to drain some red out of the shadow areas just so it's got a bit more style. It's got a bit more, you know, a bit more of a funky look to it. I might actually increase the contrast just a little bit more, but again, just feel free to play with this in any way that you want and make it look exactly the way that you want to. Finally, you may want to add some camera shake and I've covered how to do that already in my basic explosion tutorial. Again, I'm not trying to go through this in exact detail. If you want an updated version of my explosion tutorial with all of this detail and me going through this step by step, leave me a comment down below and I can certainly make this happen. Right here, I really just want to show you how easy it is to composite these elements into your shot and get some really cool results. But now, with all of that done already, let's play back the final explosion effect. And that's all I have for you today. Once again, a huge thank you to the guys at Action VFX for sending me their entire collection on a single hard drive. This will make it really convenient and easy to use these for my YouTube videos and all my film projects and all the other crazy stuff. So do expect to see more of these. Obviously, this was a sponsored video. I got sent this drive for free, but I like working with the guys at Action VFX. They're really nice. They've got great stuff on their website. So if you haven't yet, go check out actionvfx.com. And if you are considering buying any of the elements, do remember to use coupon code Surface Studio at checkout so you get 10% off your final purchase price. But now, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.